Um, now you can do it with a casting rod. And I'm going to show you here. I got a medium power casting rod and uh, 10 pound fluorocarbon again, and a you know, reel that's good for really light stuff. And then again, I got a quarter ounce shaky head, and I got the same worm. Oh, not the same worm, but I got the uh, one of the little sticks uh, from Lucky Seven Baits too. This is one of the laminate colors. Um, with a really dark green pumpkin on the back, kind of a chartreuse color on the front, and it's got some uh, pepper flake in there, and it's also got some red flake in there. So it, it's a good color, good little laminate, uh, good baby bass uh, imitator. And like I said, you can use this ladder stuff on the casting gear. It's all up to the rod and how much you can load up that rod and be able to cast uh, out. Uh, a lot of people put a lot of onus on the reel for being able to cast light Line, uh, light gear, um, most of it's actually on the rod. How much you can load up and use that rod to do the cast, not try to throw it, but use the rod as a slingshot. Might help that my electronics turn on. There we go. Always be paying attention to what's going on underneath you. Um, you know, being able to identify schools of shad, schools of bass, I mean, You'll be able to see individual bass down there at the bottom. Um, and being able to do that is huge. Again, with this shaky head, kind of just dragging it along and keeping that rod tip up. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep that line eye out of that rock you're putting it into. Um, and you'll see me drag it every once in a while. Uh, not always the best choice. It's, it's out of habit for me. That's how I, I work at Texas Rig Worm. But, uh, Keeping that rod tip up, what that does for you is that keeps that line eye, if I can get a hold of it, keeps that line eye pulling up and over things, not straight through and getting caught up. Um, and it also will protect that knot that you got on the end there. So if they're here, Usually doesn't take very long. As you can see, just the way I'm working it, it's just a very slow inching it along. Um, quite frankly, a shaky head's one of the easiest ways to fish. If, uh, if you're struggling with it, there, there are two things that really could come into play. Um, number one, the biggest thing that could come into play uh, with people struggling with uh, shaky heads and whatnot is. Quite frankly, the fish probably just aren't there. Uh, if you can see them around and they're still not biting, um, maybe try changing up a different color or something like that, but, but for the most part, there's not a fish in the world that shouldn't hit a shaky head if you put it close enough to them. Um, unless you're using braid, unless you're using some uh, small thing that might be turning them off of that bait. Uh, there really shouldn't be very many fish that will be turned off by this thing. Um, the next thing is you just got to slow down and you got to keep at it. Let it hit the bottom. Don't try to race through it. The shaky head is not a quick way of fishing. That's why a lot of people have a hard time getting up. Yep, there we go. As you saw that, that one hit it on the fall. Uh, feels like a pretty decent fish. Keep your head down. Oh man, that was a good fish. Um, that was totally my fault. As you guys could see, I didn't set the hook at all. So that uh, that was totally me. But that, that's a great thing. That, that was probably about a four or five pound fish. That was a good fish. Put it back over there, let it sink down. Again, you gotta go slow. You have to go very, very slow with it. Um, and set the hook. Don't be afraid to set the hook. If you're afraid to set the hook on light line, that means your drag is set way too tough. Um, so what I could have done with that, you, I have my drag set a little bit hard on this guy. So, yeah, that's, this brand of reel does not have a smooth drag. There we go. That's what I want. 
All right. So that was actually a pretty good fish. Uh, totally on me for losing it that time. Um, I got bit again. As you can see, he kind of just picked it up and he didn't. Uh, he didn't really hit it. It's not like he smoked it. Uh, I just noticed that my line started moving. It was a little bit more mushy than it should have been, and uh, started reeling in. Now, what I should have done at that point in time is just wail on him, set the hook. Let's try that again. Again, I'm letting it sink, letting it go down nice and slow, nice and slow. And he's on that right in the channel. That's where he was. Um, most of the time they're in this back eddy side, but he wants to be right in that channel today. It's, uh, you know, like I said, let, let the fish dictate where they are. You have an idea of what the terrain looks like, so on and so forth, and let the fish tell you which part of that terrain they want to be on that day. Okay, so not to drag out this video any longer, so just to uh, go back over and a quick let's put this straight on there. Oh, that's gonna be a bit again. Uh, gonna make sure they're as straight as possible. But simple little shaky head, sometimes the smaller baits do a lot better um, down here. And you'll see it. I already got bit. So um, that was good fish I lost. Again, make sure you're still setting the hook, but make sure your drag is set properly as to uh, not stress out your line too much and break your line. Um, other than that, there goes that. So, there's your shaky head stuff. Hopefully you learn from it. Hopefully you can go and apply some of this uh, later on.